I like to sort of subvert that whole thing. It's too, I, honestly, I've often thought I'm so bad at painting. You know, I'm serious. Um, my name's Kim, Kimberly Benson. I go by Kim mostly. Um, I'm from Denver, Colorado, but technically, you know, my family moved away from there when I was little and I grew up in a suburb of Minneapolis St. Paul so I'm primarily an abstract painter yeah primarily a painter and very much interested in abstraction and process and all the things you can do with oil paint on a rectangle you know, I love the flatness. I love the constraints of a frame of a stretcher and I paint large and small. And I mean, that's sort of a general overview, like the, the big arching umbrella. Specifically, I've been interested in the Dutch genre, still life genre, painting um, that history for a long time since graduate school. And it's still significant. And I'm looking right now at this one artist from the 17th century, Maria van Oosterwijk, and I'm butchering the pronunciation of that because it is Dutch. She was, she was interesting. She was well known for her painting. She was a successful painter, made money off of her work, yet was not the daughter of a painter or married to a successful painter. She stayed um, unmarried for her life and kind of committed herself to her paintings and to God. She was a very religious woman, but you know, this was a, at a time when that wasn't unusual. Yeah. So I'm looking at, this is a reproduction of her painting. Mm. This one in particular, it has this figurine right down here mm. you know it's not a very good painting like some of the Dutch it's like whoa blow your mind this is pretty <laughs> impressive but the thing about it that's interesting to me is it's the fact that it was invented you know I think we take for granted often that this was maybe like thinking like it's a still life, like set on a table, you arrange it, you then paint it, right? Right. But no, that's not the case at all. I mean, this was made over many years and it was composed of various flowers that don't bloom at the same time, for one thing. Like it's all through the year. And these things were likely invented, like the statue was probably invented, you know, she invented it. She right. invented this whole situation. It's very similar to how one invents a painting today. Mm -hmm. But an abstract painting, even a representational painting. But anyways, I'm interested in this history. So her life working as a woman at that time, 350 years ago. And then also just the political um, and social kind of context. So the Dutch Golden Age. I mean, this idea of trading... Um, goods through across the continent, east, west, um, oh, an awareness of globalization. I mean, I looked into like the idea of the economic crash of that time, tulip mania, where the tulip bulb soared in such an inflated price that it crashed the economy. Hmm. Just like interesting things, you know, plus the still life offers, it's a, it's a, genre that offers you like all of these possibilities into metaphor right and like symbolism and I'm sort of a romantic in that way with my paintings they're they are mm. sensual or at least I want them to be sort of sensual and romantic and beautiful yet also kind of dark and gross and I love you know the the underside of that so the decay and thinking about like time and how painting is rooted in time not only in making but through the history of painting like it's like old as dirt basically 
And I like my paintings to feel like that in a way or to like recall that. I don't know. I'm, my paintings are, I, the thing about painting oftentimes is that it's like the, the vision of oneself, right? Mm -hmm. And I have like all of these interests that are personal to me. I mean, I've always sort of been painting about decay and my kind of existence and what's around me, but I've gotten away from the figure right. to paint because the figures like rot, you know? I mean, like no one can really do it well unless you do it well. <laughs> That's my feeling. I don't know. <laughs> it just, yeah. it, it's just harder and I'm not that interested and it feels very contrived. Abstraction has possibilities. And plus I'm like thinking like we have enough images of, of people, right? I mean, we, we need to get away from ourselves. I just, what I want to say is that like painters oftentimes are just sort of self-involved, <laughs> but not in a bad way. I think it's okay. You know, I'm just like in doing my research I'm very like interested in craft, in how to make a painting in such a way that would be um, virtuosic or um, magical to mm -hmm. sort of defy the, the mechanics. Like you wouldn't know how to do it. Like you can't tell how to do it from reading it, from looking at it. But oftentimes I just feel like I'm constantly going wrong, you know? So it's this like total just investigation of my own interest in how to build a painting, challenge, problem solve a painting. Mm -hmm. I, I wanna like make a bunch of different types of paintings, like to really think like, I don't have a style. But they all end up sort of being similar, I don't know. Well, tools are everything. Tools are everything, I think. I mean, and that in ways of many, I feel like that's something that is oftentimes the problem, where you feel like you're being worked by your tool or you, you can't do what you want to do because you don't know how to do it because you don't have the right tool. And that's with anything, like fixing an automobile to fixing an oven or whatever. I've tried to learn as much about the processes I'm interested in. And that has been, you know, quite helpful. I mean, you can't like these masking techniques, you know? Yeah. I am very interested in printmaking and, and negative, positive um, stenciling kinds of ways of producing a painting. I oftentimes don't use my hand in that classic way of like painting, you know, like right. brush and hand. I find that that's not what I'm most interested in, even though I do it a little bit, but it's almost like, I like to sort of subvert that whole thing. It's too, Honestly, I've often thought I'm so bad at painting, you know, I'm serious. Like I just half the time don't know what I'm doing and I just feel like I can't really paint that well. So I try to like come up with different ways of making the image I want to make. And I love sanding and scraping back. So like having like a really good orbital sander I feel like the subtractive processes are important, yeah. more important. I often do moves and I'm like, it's going to be better when I undo you in a little while. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm just like, I, you know, I discovered different types of tape over the years that I find useful or going to the hardware stores like the best tools are everything. It's like, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's 
maybe something that gets a little bit overlooked because I, I think painters love to keep things a mystery.